So Nishan, uh, the topics of data privacy itself, I find it's pretty rare to find good resources about it. So when I see your book, right, I think it's pretty, maybe it's one of the thing that I just bumped into, but actually the topic is pretty hot these days. People talk about data, people talk about like GDPR in the Europe. Here in Singapore, we also have something similar called PDPA. And also users have becoming more aware that data privacy is a key thing for them. And I think when I see your book, I find it very interesting. And the first thing that I would ask you is actually to define what is this data privacy? And there's an equivalent privacy engineering associated with it. Maybe if you can describe what those are, that would be great. Yeah, so privacy does not have a definition per se that is universally accepted. So I think of it as two different definitions and hopefully we can overlap the two over the course of this conversation. So from a user perspective, from a customer's perspective, I like to think about people like my parents, my sibling, my grandparents, my spouse, her dad. For them, privacy is about being treated with respect, like being able to make informed decisions with their own data and not be caught by surprise. Like there should not be an example where somebody intentionally, willfully or continuously and carelessly did something with your data that you would not have wanted to do. Or in other words, I shouldn't do something with somebody else's data that I wouldn't want somebody else to do with mine. So there's a very human, visceral definition that may not be quantifiable, but something that is easily understandable, right? That's the first definition. The second thing I would say for privacy is as a company, as an institution, as a government, you want to make sure that you use somebody's data in a way that is respectful, that is transparent, that is compliant, that is continuously improved. If you think about the scale of data, if you think about the nature of human engagement, if you think about the diversity of human beings across the world, No two people are going to think about privacy the same way. So how do you, as a company, factor in the first part of respect and the second part of scale and governance and maturity? That is, for me, privacy. Making sure that people aren't surprised, making sure that people aren't disrespected, your business is handled courteously and professionally. So privacy is about handling data in a way that builds for both compliance and trust, maturity and transparency. Right. Thanks for a really great definition. So the few key things that I picked up is about trust, it's about treating our users with respect, right? And also treating others like what you want to be treated, I guess, right? So if you don't want your data to be shared, maybe don't do that with people as well. I think in the past, I don't know, maybe the last five or 10 years or so, people start to share their data on the internet more and more, right? Maybe Mm -hmm. with the introductions of new websites, new applications, people start to share more data. And in the last few years or so, we can see so many data breaches in the news, right? Mm -hmm. And there are also people who are becoming more concerned about it. Maybe if you can summarize all these, what are actually the concerns from the company's point of view and also from the user's point of view, why they should think a lot more about data privacy these days? So I think I'll start with something a lot more high level and then kind of hone in with a very specific example. So what has happened in the last 10, 13 years is pretty significant because multiple forces have colluded together to change our world in ways that often makes it hard to recognize the world we live in compared to where we were like just a generation ago. We had an expansion of internet access unlike any time before in human history. We had a switch from pure laptop, desktop functions to mobile devices. We had the explosion of global ID. So in the past where you had to create a username password every single time, you can now authenticate using your Google ID or a bunch of other IDs. You had the ability to build platforms to help provide people capabilities or to provide other people capabilities to sell stuff to customers at scale. Now, in the past, you had major changes happen in small increments. So you had Intel switch from memory to processing, which was a pretty big shift for its time. We had this amazing tech bubble in the late 1990s, but that was an example of innovation in search of actual utilization. You had people building amazing stuff, but there was no market for it. But in the last 10 years, we had several changes of that scale happen at the same time. And I don't think we have fully understood how much humanity has changed because in the last 10 years, a bunch of other things have also changed. Platform misinformation, abuse of trust, power consolidation in the tech sector. We've also seen examples of unstable democracies essentially teetering on the brink, people saying stuff that is factually not true. So because all of these things that have happened at the same time, it is very hard to scale anything and measure things in a meaningful fashion. So we have examples of people behaving badly or people behaving carelessly, and sometimes both at the same time. As a result of which, I can say we live in a world where our computational processing power far exceeds our moral processing power. So the ability to measure change, the ability to balance innovation and personalization on the one side with competition and compliance on the other is very hard to do. So I feel like companies need to worry about this because you could have things happen to you in a way that you cannot fully predict at a time and place that is not of your choosing. And whether you are a company that's collecting the data and building the products on the one side, or you're a customer who wants privacy, but also low latency at the same time, 
you have a bunch of things, bunch of expectations and a bunch of actions that are collectively incompatible with each other. And yet somehow we have to figure out how to make sense of this world we live in because everybody wants everything all the time. So that's the challenge here. How do you catch these things before something bad happens? How do you build the right tools? How do you build the right products? How do you course correct before things go badly? How do you offer training and compliance at the same time? The lack of understanding and the lack of scaling and the lack of ability to undo things is the big challenge. So my advice to companies tends to be, you should get things done correctly before you go too far down the path. I remember when in my undergraduate college days, one of our computer science professors, she had a sign outside her door saying, days and days of debugging saved you hours and hours of planning or hours and hours of testing. And I think that analogy is an operative even more today, especially considering the volume of data, the scale of data, the profligacy of bad actors, and the sheer complexity of the regulations and the tech stack we operate in. And how about from the user side? So what would be your summary of the concerns that people should think about now from the user's perspective about data privacy? I remember this was in 2003. I was an RA in a college dorm. And I remember this was the first time people had something akin to an online photo journal that was hosted by the university's internet. And as an RA, you were not allowed to drink. In fact, I remember correctly, nobody was allowed to drink in the college dorm. And this guy thought it was a good idea to have an open bottle of alcohol, Bud Light. This guy was not 21 and allow himself to be photographed with that bottle and let somebody upload that photograph in a newsletter. He lost his job the next day. But there are so many of us who may have done, not me, obviously, because I'm smart that way, but so many of us that have done things that may not be great from today's perspective, but there is no online record of it, right? That was the first example that what you do in a confined space may not remain private for too long. So I feel like that's the lesson here from a customer's perspective, right? How do you make intelligent decisions with your data? But the challenge is, unlike somebody holding a beer bottle in their teens, the complexity now is like you may end up doing saying something online that may come back to haunt you. Or you may want things like when you open the Netflix app, for example, how would you like it if the app takes 10 minutes to load? No, you want to go on Netflix online and you want to find something within the first 10, 15 seconds so you can get on with it and get on with your evening so you can Netflix and chill, right? With the customers, it's the same thing. It's the incompatibility of expectations around privacy and security on the one side and expectations around quick performance of your service and app on the other side, right? That's the challenge here. And the other aspect is a lot of customers don't fully understand how the internet works, how online services get funded, because the domain has grown really quickly. And I think the tech sector has to do a much better job of telling people, hey, here's how we make the internet work. Here's how your data gets used. So the lack of patience, the abundance of complexity collectively means it's very hard for customers often to make an informed decision. And everything moves really quickly. There are too many hands in the pie, too many people in the kitchen at the same time. And also... The regulatory state, the tools that are being built to protect the customers at the government level and the company level don't fully appreciate the complexity and the volume of data. So everybody is moving very fast. The volumes of data and the number of transactions are going pretty fast. And as a result, customers cannot always make informed decisions. Like how many of us read, forget online for a second, when you get a new credit card, you get the credit card bill in the mail. And alongside the bill, you get 10 pages of small print, which is the governance and terms and conditions. How many people really read that stuff, right? The level of clarity, the level of understanding and the implications and the gap between the two is, I think, the big challenge for customers to reconcile right now. 